Hello, everyone. So, I finished grading the written question from last Thursday. What are the purposes of interlaboratory comparisons? I think it is important to have a full reminder on the topic because the grades are catastrophic. Nowadays, laboratories often believe that participating in an interlaboratory comparison will allow them to achieve many different purposes. However, it is not the case, except for Adele. Everyone got it wrong. Well done, Adele. Thank you very much. I was actually lucky enough to do an internship at BIPIA, where I learned that to create an interlaboratory comparison, it's very simple. You have to design, carry out, and evaluate measurements or tests on similar items with at least two laboratories. As with any measurement method, there is a procedure that needs to be followed in a precise order with a logical succession of operations implemented during execution. First, however, we need to define the interlaboratory comparison, its purpose, and its misurans. We then select the material and study its heterogeneity and stability. Next, we physically organize the comparison. The following step is to assess the data collected on a probabilistic model basis. And finally, we deliver a report to the participants. Perfect. We now have an idea of the common features, but a closer look reveals that there are various types of interlaboratory comparisons. Therefore, we need to focus on the differences. Actually, what leads to differences is the entry point, the prerequisite, in other words, the very first step from which everything is built, the purpose. So how do you define the purpose of a PTS? Arthur? Um. No, not her. Uh, you have to ask yourself the right question. Do we want to assess the laboratory's performance? Do we want to estimate the accuracy of a measurement method? Do we want to assign a consensus value to a material? International standardization in this field is a valuable help. For each purpose, the answer is different because it relies on an underlying probabilistic model. If the purpose is to assess the laboratory's performance, what is interlaboratory comparison called? Matthew? It's called the, uh, of, uh, uh... A proficiency testing. It is regulated by two standards, ISO 17043, General Requirements for Proficiency Testing, and ISO 13, 5228, Statistical Methods for Use in Proficiency Testing by Interlaboratory Comparison. The laboratories compared report their results in the same way they would to their customers. The purpose is to compare the laboratories assessing their proficiency. Very good, Adele. I see that your internship at BIPEA has been well understood. Now, if we wish to estimate the accuracy of a measurement method, we must focus on the method's performance by quantifying its trueness and precision. This purpose is achieved by the ISO 5725 series of standards, which can be divided into six complementary parts. It should be noted that a metrological traceability of a value is not easily obtained in the agri-food and environmental fields. This is why the trueness of the method is rarely estimated in these fields. Instead, the method's accuracy will be assessed in terms of precision using an interlaboratory comparison based on an appropriate experimental design. Randomly selected participants use the same measurement method and apply it rigorously. They report at least two independent test results. The purpose is to estimate the repeatability variance and reproducibility variance. Finally, if we wish to attribute a consensus value to a characteristic of a material, we will assign a value to this material. The associated standard is ISO 17034, General Requirements for the Competence of Reference Material Producers. This standard is backed up by a detailed ISO 35 guide the participating laboratories are selected for their specialization in the relevant field. These laboratories obtain results on test items that are sufficiently homogeneous and stable. For this kind of interlaboratory comparison, the purpose is to estimate the material's consensus assigned value using the correctly estimated general mean. In conclusion, 
PTS cannot be used to do everything. Depending on their purpose, they can be used. To assess the analytical proficiency of laboratories, standard ISO 1 to estimate the accuracy of a measurement method, standard ISO 5725, to assign a consensus value to a material, standard ISO 1734. As we can see, PTS present powerful tools available to laboratories, but they require a precise definition of their purposes, I order to justify the analyses performed and their specific interpretation.